In this video, we provide the solution to question number 12 for practice exam number one for math 1220, in which case we have a work problem. Specifically, we have a water pumping problem out of a tank. So let's first talk about the shape of the tank. The shape of the tank is in fact going to be a solid of revolution itself. A tank has the shape of the surface generated by revolving the parabolic segment y equals x squared on the interval zero to three for x about the y-axis. And all of this is measured in feet. So before we even talk about the pumping problem, let's make sure we understand the shape of our tank. So we're gonna have our x, y axis as illustrated right here. I'm going to draw a parabola like so. Uh, yeah, that, look, that looks pretty good. In which case we might do something like, we should label things. We're gonna have x equals zero right here. And then let's say that this point over here, eh, nah, not that far, we'll go like, We'll just go, I guess, to the edge right here. This will be x equals 3. This thing does not have to be perfectly drawn to scale or anything like that. Um, this point right here for future reference would be the point 3, 9, because after all, this is the curve y equals x squared. Um, we're going to take this, this curve from 0 to 3, and we're going to revolve it around the uh, y-axis. So I'll draw the other side here for like completeness sake. And then I'll also draw a line at the very top of this thing. And so while this is not perfectly drawn to scale, this region over here is the thing that is our tank. But of course you have to think of that parabola and spin it around in three dimensions. Um, if the tank is full and it's full with a fluid weighing um, 100 pounds per cubic feet, then let's, let's notice that's not water, right? But I mean, it is, it's something, uh, but notice the units here. We're using feet, we're using pounds. Uh, we don't need to multiply our our results by 9.8 because with scientific units, um, you often measure this with mass. Mass is not a force. You have to multiply by the force due to gravity. With standard units, pounds is already a force. It's already a weight. It already has that built into it. So it's gonna be 100 pounds per cubic foot in that situation. So that'll come into play later. Um, so we need to set up an integral to find the work required to pump the contents of the tank five feet above the top of the tank. So I want to make mention, like we mentioned over here, the top of the tank is happening at y equals nine. We need to then go five more feet up the line here. And so in the end, the top of the tank, is, uh, sorry, we have to pump the water to the point y equals 14. Uh, that'll be important for us in just a little bit. Okay, uh, so we need to set up the integral to calculate this work, but we are not going to evaluate it. So our strategy for doing this is to look at a typical cross section. So if we were to cut our tank into little slices, they would be circular slices, cylindrical slices, and then we have to move these to the top of the tank. Now let's do it in steps. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the volume of one of these slices. Because it's a solid of revolution, each slice is going to be a disc. And so its volume will be pi r squared. The thickness here is gonna be a dy because the thickness of one is a small change of the y coordinate. So we get that um, the volume will be pi r squared dy. Well, r is not a very good one if I have to integrate with respect to y. So how do we get rid of the r? Now the r is the, is the radius of this cylinder, of course, uh, but it's also the distance from the x-axis to this point on the very edge of the circle. Um, whose coordinates are going to be x comma y. So in particular, the radius of this disk is going to be the x coordinate there. So we can improve upon that, pi x squared dy. But remember, we want to integrate with respect to y, so I have to rewrite the x's in terms of the y's. But as this point lives on the parabola, the relationship y equals x squared comes into play. So since I have an x squared, I can rewrite that as a y, and we get the integral y or pi times y times dy. That gives us the volume of the of that slice. I then need to compute the weight. Weight is the force due to gravity. And although W makes sense, because W might also mean work, I'm gonna actually write this as F, F for force. To find the force, that is the weight of the object, we're gonna take its density, which is pounds per cubic foot, and then we're gonna multiply it by its volume. So we have this constant rho times volume. That gives you the weight of the object. Um, the rho is 100 pounds per uh, cubic foot. The volume we just did, pi y dy. And so then we're ready to talk about the work here. The work is the integral of force times distance. I guess there is one other thing we haven't considered yet. What is the distance that has to be traveled here? Now, if you take a typical slice like this, this has to move to five feet above. 
So the distance that a typical slice has to go is it has to go from y equals 14 to the, it has to go up to there from the location of the slice. This slice is happening at the address of y. So the distance we have to travel is gonna be 14 minus y in that situation. So then if we apply that to the work that we were doing just a moment ago, we're gonna end up with a 100 pi that came from the force integral. I just put those coefficients in the front. We have y for the for the force. I'm gonna put the dy at the end, so then I'm gonna put a, neg a 14 minus y right here. dy, that's the integrand. Then the next thing we have to consider is the locations of the disk. That is, what are the bounds of integration? Our disk can range anywhere from the very bottom of the parabola. That's gonna happen at y equals zero. And they can go all the way to the top of my parabola, which actually was bounded above here at x equals three, AKA y equals nine. So the upper bound is gonna be nine. So even though the, the disc will be pumped up to the level um, y equals 14, the integrals bounds are the locations of the disc, not where they end up, but where they are. And these discs live anywhere from y equals zero to y equals nine. And so I'm gonna put a nice little box around this one. You can see why I changed the font color. This is the very final answer. This gives us the integral to measure the volume of this thing. I confess it's not a very hard integral to compute, but the instructions did say do not evaluate it. All of the points here are for setting up the integral, not from its evaluation.